Okay, so welcome to our third and final video for our modeling discussion of chapter four. So again, in the last two videos, as well as um, leading up to this last week, we have discussed exponential and logarithmic detail uh, functions in detail. We first started with talking about just their basic functions and their graphs. Then we talked about the properties of logarithms. Then we talked about how to solve those different equations. Now we're talking about how to model those. So in videos one and two, we looked at their models, but we haven't talked about logistic models at all. So let's motivate why you would even need a logistic model. So here are some of the problems with exponential models. So let's start with exponentials. Well, when you look at, say, an exponential growth model, the thing grows, and what you'll notice is it grows forever, and it'll grow without bound. So that's a problem. Similarly, a logistic growth model will also grow forever. It does it slower, but it still does do this. So the big problem is, is that in these two models, you are assuming infinite growth. And now usually this is a conversation that I like to have in a classroom setting, but I'll go ahead and do our best over Zoom. So this is a really poor assumption to make. These models work really well in the short term. So maybe I'll do this, um, work well, for short-term models. So if you're just talking about maybe a couple of hours or days or weeks or heck, even a couple of decades, these models can work fine. But if you're talking long-term growth and by long-term growth, like centuries or millennia, then you run into problems. So what are some of the problems about why things can't grow infinitely? Well, some that come to mind immediately to me are things like water. Water is probably one of the most valuable resources we have on our planet. And as we've seen, even in just my short lifetime, there have been a lot of water wars. In California, lots of severe droughts. And what does that lead to? It leads to a lack of food. If you don't have enough food, you can't sustain your, po your population. If you don't have enough water and food, that of course can lead to diseases, which will kill off your population. Some other things that come to mind, um, maybe not so much in our kind of rural area, but if you think about places like Hong Kong, just lack of space in general. So all of these, I'm sorry, these two models, as well as linear growth models, assume that your population can grow infinitely large, but we know that's not the case. In fact, if you ever take any biology class, you'll take your Petri dish and you'll put on some little bacteria on some auger. Auger is their food. And then they'll spread and they'll grow and they'll be happy for a while, but eventually they'll start competing with one another. And as they start competing, they will start killing each other or they'll reach the edge of their Petri dish and then they can't grow any further. So that's a problem. Neither of these two models take those things into consideration. So let's talk a little bit about the logistic function. So I'll put this equation down here. A logistic function has the following form. And there are several problems on your homework that are like this, which is why we need to discuss these, one of many reasons. So in function form, f of x is equal to some number c divided by and then here is how it's tied to an exponential. 1 plus a e to the minus b x. So there is an exponential component, 
However, notice it's in the denominator. So a few other things that we should mention is that A, B, and C are just numbers. So just a quick review. This notation means that A, B, and C belong to the set of real numbers. So that and B and C, those are just values that would be given in the problem. X is the independent variable. And E is just the irrational E that you're used to dealing with, that we see in our exponential uh, models from before. So another thing that we should briefly talk about before we even look at a problem is this idea of the graph and why the graph looks the way that it does. So in general, you might have a logistic graph that does the following. Put this on a quadrant. So you'll have some initial population. Got to start somewhere for things to reproduce. And what will happen is, first of all, your population, of course, should never drop below zero. So you'll have an asymptote here. That means that your population can't fall, can't become negative. And then let's call this time in whatever units it is that you're working with. But what the logistic model does is you'll still have some growth, but it's not going to grow infinitely. Rather, it's going to have some cap on it. So it's going to do something like this. So the other thing about the logistic model is it will have a horizontal asymptote but at, at zero, but it also has another horizontal asymptote that looks something like this. So at some point, yes, it is true, you can start with your initial population and it will grow, but it'll only grow so far. The planet can only hold so many people or the Petri dish can only hold so many bacteria before it runs out of space or food or water or oxygen or whatever the case might be. So this maximum level of population has a biological term and it is called the carrying capacity. So if you've taken a biology class in high school, or if you're currently taking one, you've probably heard of a carrying capacity. By definition, again, it's just the maximum population level that your particular system can sustain successfully. Now keep in mind, it might overshoot it sometimes. For instance, um, Maybe you'll have a little spike here, but then something usually like a disease or a famine or something will happen and then it might drop back down a little bit below it and it'll continue and it'll kind of flatten out to your curve. So don't think that this happens nice and smoothly. You might see some overshoots and some undershoots, but the asymptote means in the long run, this is what's going to happen. So let's take a look at a logistic example. Okay, so let's say we're talking about a deer population. So we have a population of deer. in some refuge, T month after the refuge opened is given by the formula N of T, so N for number of deer, T for time in months, 300 divided by 1 plus 
came in to the minus 0 0.05 team. So notice for this problem, I have given you the logistic model. Again, N will be number of beer and T will be time and month. And let's just answer a series of questions. So how many beer were initially introduced to this ref refuge? Now, I have answered or maybe mentioned this several times, but anytime you hear the word initially, you should be thinking t equals zero. That's what that is telling you. So that being said, let's just plug zero in for t. 300 divided by one plus 14e to the minus 0 0.05 times zero which gives me 300 over 1 plus 14. Okay, so remember, anything times 0 is 0. Anything raised to the 0 is 1. So 1 times 14 is 14. So now 300 divided by what would become 15 is 20. So they didn't have very many deer to begin with on this refuge. They only had 20 deer. But let's see how quickly the population grew. So how many deer? Oops. After, let's say, 10 months. Well, this means t equals 10. So let's go ahead and plug 10 into our equation, 300 divided by one plus 14e to the minus 0 0.05 times 10. I will truncate our work into just a few steps. I think you could do a lot of this in your calculator on your own. So I will do the decimal approximation for the exponential component, 0 0.606531. Again, notice I'm carrying several decimal places. That way I'm very accurate and I don't round until the very end. So that becomes 300 over 9.49142, which is 31.608. But here's where you need to be a little bit careful in terms of rounding. So we have 31.6 deer after 10 months, but you cannot have 0.6 of a deer. So in these circumstances, you have to round down. You don't have enough to make another deer. So just round down to the 31. So then I have just a few more questions that I would like to continue with this problem. So the next problem asks a different type of question. I'll put this right here on top. So for part C, what we want to know now is when will the population reach 200 deer? So first of all, to motivate this, you might ask yourself, why do we even really care? This is just another math problem, another logistical problem. Why is this important? Well, if you're into wildlife management or forestry or biology, these have really large implications. Do you have enough room on your refuge to feed 200 deer? Do you have enough water resource on your refuge? 
are you going to have enough people later in your group to continue working at the refuge if it takes a long time for that to happen? So let's go ahead now and answer this type of question. So 200 is now what you plug in for the number of deer on the left-hand side. And then what we are asking for is, so this is now the equation. And we haven't solved this type of problem as it is before. So let's walk through this carefully. Again, my goal is to solve for t. So in mathematics, as soon as I see that I have a fraction, I move the denominator to the other side by multiplication. I personally do not like fractions, as most of you all don't either. So let's get rid of the fraction by moving it over to the other with multiplication. Now let's go ahead and distribute. So 200 times 1 is 200. 200 times 14 is 2801. Now we're just solving a regular exponential. So let's go ahead and subtract the 200 to the other side. Divide both sides by 2,801. So I have um, 0 0.035. Three five seven two oh two. Then I will natural log both sides. And finally, divide both sides by negative zero point zero five. So in its decimal form, I have that numerator for the ln and then the negative 0 0.5 for the denominator. So I end up with approximately 66.5. Remember this was in months. So if you'd like, you could convert that into years and it's approximately five and a half years. So what that tells me is that my population, remember the population initially started with just 20 deer. So I introduced 20 deer into a refuge. After 10 months, that population was at 31 deer. So it grew by 11 deer in 10 months. Then after five and a half years, it grew to 200 deer. So then you could ask yourself other types of questions and maybe I'll put this last question right down here. What is the carrying capacity? Now remember the carrying capacity is the maximum that you could sustain in this particular refuge. So what is that carrying capacity? So really this question is asking, what happens if you let T go to infinity or get as large as possible? So let's go back to the original function that we had up here. So originally we had the function N of T equals 300 over one plus 14 E the minus 0 0.05. Okay, so if that were the case, and here's our original function, now we're letting t get really, 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 really big. So the larger t gets, the more negative this gets. Remember, e decays to zero. So if this entire thing got, if, if this exponent got arbitrarily large, 
then this thing would decay down to zero. 14 times zero is 14. So this thing would turn into 300. And to really emphasize that, I'll put one plus 14 times zero. That's from the decay, which is 300 over one, which is 300. So with the given resources that this particular refuge has, the most deer that it could successfully maintain is 300. Notice that's also the same as the numerator. So that concludes our discussion of our exponential, logistic, and uh, log logarithmic modeling for today. I will see you all tomorrow for our activity day.